Soy San Antonio Football Nation. Benjamin Dosa here along with Miguel Padilla bringing you episode number... Number three for the 2020 season, y'all. That's it. 2020 season is upon us. We start now. And I'm telling you right now, Miguel, I'm excited about today's um, podcast, man. We got lots to talk about. Tons of things to talk about. We're going to be talking about the league in itself, the USL League. Tons of changes coming down from the USL, Miguel. And then we're going to talk about our beloved uh, San Antonio FC. We got the chance to go today and uh, enjoy the season ticket membership uh, value of it, man. How'd you like that? Oh, it, was a, it was a great experience, man. We got to meet uh, a lot of the uh, supporters and fans. We got to talk to uh, some of the staff, of course. We got to meet with uh, Alan Marchena. He was obviously walking around, getting to uh, talk with everybody. And, uh, of course, Tim Holt was there as well, saying hi to everybody, wishing everybody Merry Christmas. So it was great to see everybody, all this, the staff. A lot of people we hadn't seen since the end of the season. Um, it was great, man. And I'm over here looking like I'm the New York Jets head coach, Adam Gase, with my hat on. Kind of looking real. We'll get back to the <laughs> no, video tape on that. But nah, no, 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 funny, no, man. But, uh, <laughs> no, it was a great experience, man, um, here at the STM. So uh, a lot of great prizes they gave away, a lot of good benefits. So. We'll go. We'll dive into that here a little bit more here later on. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just readjust here real quick. But no, really. I mean, tons of fun. We had a season ticket membership. But one of the things we got to talk to a lot. Um, we want to give a shout out to one of our buddies out there, Royce. Love seeing him. Let's give a little bit of shout out to some of the folks that we got to meet up with there. The Crocketeers, Thomas Saints, George. Was there some of the Mission City Firm members? Were there Michelle Salazar from Mission City Firm? Was there? Um, and it just it's just awesome to get to see everybody that's been there. Uh, some of them since day one, since 2016. That would be me, <laughs> um, and and some of those other folks. Um, uh, Jenny Chick and you know and, yeah. and, and and hubby were always there. One of the number one favorite supporters, in my opinion, of San Antonio. Going all the way back to the Scorpion days. But let's get this show started on the road, folks. The USL has been announcing tons of changes, adding brand new teams, um, player transactions. Miguel, get this thing going off, Bubba. All right. So, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of changes here since uh, the end of the season. Of course, the big news was that Fresno Fresno FC, the Foxes, yeah, are not going to come back next Bye. year. Unfortunately, they could not find a stadium deal. No, 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 no. Uh, and that's, and that's, I hate to cut you off, but yeah, uh, that's the number one purpose. When you're going to come into the USL, they, they literally say you have to have, must have a soccer specific stadium. At least plans for At it. At least plans your, for it. New York, New days. York, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, New Mexico United, one season they played in a baseball. This season, their inaugural season played in a baseball stadium as well as uh, a locomotive, but they already broke ground on their new stadium. Fresno was not able to do that. Yeah, Vegas. Uh, Vegas. Even though they played in the baseball field, it's considered a soccer specific stadium now. Nobody uh, owns because, it because, uh, yeah, the the old minor league team that was there, they're gone, and obviously they're going to work on renovations, actually making it more spot soccer specific uh, than it is now. Um, but going back to Fresno Foxes, yeah, they're gone. They're they're in talks to possibly move to to Monterey, California. Ooh, I don't know if that's, that's going to happen this crazy. season. Um, they're cutting it pretty close because obviously the schedule needs to come out now soon. Um, and you know the USO needs to start working toward 2020, and players need to start getting signed. Yeah, because I need. So I that's think... that's that's a big one. Another one uh, is San Diego Loyal here in the West. In the you know Landon yes, Donovan's team. Landon Donovan. They announced well, we that a couple weeks ago, a little bit less than a month ago. Uh, a lot of people are excited for that one. San Diego finally has a professional soccer team down there in Southern California. Good for them. They deserve it. It's a long time overdue. Yeah, they have a huge soccer following in San Diego. Yeah, they're going to be playing. They're going to be playing there on the campus of San Diego State. So they got. Nice. They actually have a pretty good stadium there. I think it's a five thousand, six thousand seat stadium there that they're going to be playing in. So it uh, looks like the fan support there is a uh, pretty good. They finally, like I said, they finally got a professional soccer team run by Landon Donovan. He's going to be the head coach uh, as well. So I'm kind of. I'm kind of fanboying a little bit, so, <laughs> so we get, get to, to see, see Eric Wijnaldum one year, yeah, and, and then, then all of a sudden Landon Donovan the next year. Um, What's next? So those are the big things on the west in the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference. Uh, Ottawa Fury went away. Yep, they're gone. Uh, so now Miami FC, which was from the MPSL, bought the rights to Ottawa. Absolutely. And now they maintain the Miami FC logo and name, but they're going to be a completely different team. I don't think they're keeping anybody on the roster. I think it's just complete overhaul, complete change. So you're going to see Miami FC starting here in the in the 2020 season. Uh, another big change was Bethlehem Bethlehem Steel, Steel got rebranded. Historic, yeah. Uh, I'm actually kind of sad to see the name go because for for those of you who don't know, I grew up in the East Coast in Jersey, and even before MLS days, like the the teams like Bethlehem Steel, the the Brooklyn Italians, yes. you had 
the teams up there in Boston. You had the, I think, the Chicago Immigrants. These, you know, oh, yeah, the Rochester yeah, Rhinos. Rochester Rhinos, yeah. Long, you know, the Long Island Rough Riders. These were teams that were pretty famous back in, like, even up to like the nineteen twenties. The nineteen twenties were in the heyday, forties. Even up to the eighties, you know, like especially there in Pennsylvania, man. Yeah. Um, with Bethlehem Steel out of Pennsylvania, they were one of the first ever. Yeah, the team I think clubs. was. I think it, it was his modern form was founded in 1904, 1908, wow, somewhere yeah, around no, there, no, no. early nineteen hundreds. And then MLS buys them out. So yeah, Bethlehem Steel. Uh, you know the the name got changed. Now they're part of the Philadelphia Union uh, Academy. Now yeah. they're Philadelphia Union Two because. Philadelphia Union wants it to be more clear in terms of that pathway to pro from their youth academy all the way up to uh, up to uh, the, the first squad. But so I mean, I'm it, still I'm still sad to see it go because that's a lot of great history behind that logo and that name. Yeah, well, I mean, well, let's talk a little bit about that USL MLS connection real quick. Now that we brought it up, I mean, uh, there's a lot of MLS teams that use USL Pro One as their quote. And unquote farming teams, one of the most. Well, the USL famous, championship. Or the pro, USL championships. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, USL okay. championships, and then USL Pro is uh, one is one underneath the championships. But one of the famous ones that we have here in the Texas is the Rio Grande Valley Toros, who are basically Houston Dynamo. Yeah, they're but farm. they're 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 kind of a unique situation because they're kind of a hybrid uh, organization. Uh, but that's, it, that's what they're calling it. So that's why they maintain their identity as RGV Toros, even though they they're a feeder into the to the dynamo system. so what about these teams that feed into these mls teams like san jose they use who they use reno uh they use reno yeah they use reno and yeah. a lot of the san jose players go to reno obviously la galaxy la galaxy 2 atlanta yeah. atlanta united 2 now you got philadelphia philadelphia 2 what does this mean for the usl i mean can any mls team say hey we want to just buy those rights take your name away and just forget about it, you it's it's um it's interesting because I feel like it's kind of stealing away from the identity of these clubs. Yes. Um, it's it's stealing away from There's USL. No yeah, it's stealing away from the USL having its own identity as its own league. Now you have all these two clubs. And I understand it. You know, like there's there's Barcelona B and there's, you know, you have Bayern Munich B over there overseas. Uh -huh. So I can understand uh, the the intent and the concept of everything. But, I mean, it's still – when you see something like Bethlehem Steel go away, again, you know, it's a storied club. It's a club with a lot of history. It's won USL Open Cups in the past. I mean, these were clubs that used to bring in 20,000, 30,000 people back in the early 1920s. These are like, the, you could almost call it the founding fathers of soccer. Yeah, here in America. absolutely. So, so to see it go away, uh, the name go away, obviously the club will still be there because it'll be Philadelphia Union too, but it's still pretty sad to go. And then another one too that got rebranded was Swole Park. Swole Park Swole Rangers. Swole Park Rangers. Now yeah. they're sporting KC too because yeah. same thing. That, that same was thing. Be Everything want to be in line thing. from the academy, from, from academy to first team. And that was going to be my next point, you know, Hey, well, okay. Then we talked about some of these teams that have not taken that name away, but then Swell Park Rangers, they've been around for a while, some time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they say, "Hey, Sporting KC, well, you are our feeder club. Let's take your name away and make you Sporting KC right. too." Which they're not in the West anymore. The, that team moved over to, to the, the Eastern, Eastern Conference. Conference. Yeah. So let's talk about San Diego and these USL changes. Any changes yet, Miguel? As to who leaves the West and who joins the East. Because let's be honest, folks. In the USL West, there are more teams in the West Western Conference of the USL than there is in the East. Uh, well, I mean, it depends as the teams come in and teams fold. I mean, it's it's a, right now the USL is kind of in a fluctuation. So They still stand at, what is um, it? Uh, I think we're still at 30, 32 teams. 32 I mean, teams. it's kind of hard to keep track of how everything's going right now. But now we're losing Louisville here to MLS. I yeah, they're they, they announced their, uh, their crest change, which... That's another. That's another one. That's they, a hint. Louisville. They lost their identity with with losing the crest. I mean, it happened to FC Cincinnati. Don't they I look mean, like the Sacramento Kings? Nashville. Almost? <laughs> yeah, Nash, yeah. Nashville lost their identity when their crest changed over. Yeah, so I guess yeah, it's an yeah. MLS thing. You, you know, and seeing that, I'm kind of glad that San Antonio FC Has hasn't kept gone its MLS. Yeah. Let's, so let's talk about uh, that. Now that we've seen, we've talked about the USL and and how what's going on there, Miguel. Let's talk about San Antonio FC's integrity, and let's integrate that into the Alan Marchena. We had a left, we had a great time ago and I today at the season ticket member uh, Christmas party and um, we got to talk and one of the perks about being season part of the season ticket membership and we we're going to be uh, showing you these images here and some of the video that we got to see about the season ticket membership uh, Christmas party and, and the perks of it is heck man we got to stand by and got to talk to some of the fans the staff um, got to see some of the um, Supporter groups that were there, like we mentioned earlier, the Crocketeers, Mission City Firm, very well represented. Yeah. Uh, got to talk to a lot of other folks that uh, 
love the soccer community. So, and we got to meet some first time ever season ticket members. They were just like, this is great. You know, and then, and then we get to talk a little bit to Alan Marchena, uh, our, our, um, our new head coach, the gaffer, the skipper, whatever you want to call him. And we got to talk to Tim Holt a little bit. And that was awesome for us. And then Joey Harvey, who's in charge of, um, and Miguel Hopkins, who are in charge of the whole season ticket membership, um, program. And they got to give, they got, we got a lot of insight. Um, what are some of the takeaways you have from just showing up? I know you're not a season ticket member, but you are part of the Soy Sad family. We are, and you get to go with that. And I know you've, you've supported season ticket membership through Soy Sad, So you basically are. So tell me some of those perks that you got to take away. And is, is this your first season ticket membership event that you've gone it's to? It's not the first event. I went to one last year um, as well when, when I first came on board with Soy Staff. You know, officially, we got, we got to go to one right. in the springtime. Yeah, oh, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, that was, I think, my first official event that we actually went to at Soy Staff. Oh, that was awesome. Uh, yeah, I and that was a that. great experience. Nervous. I got to meet Rafa. <laughs> yeah, got to meet Rafa and all that stuff. Yeah, it's a little bit nervous, but yeah, it's all good. Um, but what I got to take away was, you know, Alan Marchena when he first stated saying that this is going to be a family first driven club. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that echoed and resonated throughout the front office and Miguel Hopkins and, and, and all those and that team there is, is working hard to make that, make that happen. So, um, I know they're going to start announcing some of the stuff here in the coming days and weeks. And, and of course we'll definitely be promoting that because there's a lot of great stuff coming up. You know? Oh man, we, um, so one of the things that I can say that I, I got to information about, I love, I'll be honest with you, I love being a season ticket member. And every year they do something new. Um, I got to talk to Miguel Hopkins and Joey Harvey, and they literally said this. Benji, tell folks that there's some big things coming. It's just not getting a scarf. It's just not getting a... Um, some extra free tickets extra for U.S. Free Open tickets Cups. for U.S. Open Cups, yeah. free membership for U.S. Open Cups, or even free membership to a preseason game. He said, there's some awesome things coming your way. And I was, I was licking my chops. What they are, I don't care. But every year they do something new. Yeah. Every year they give, and you get, and you get discounts at the soccer factory for being a season ticket member. And I'm excited about it. Um, who knows what it's going to be? I mean, they, it, what else can they do? You get to meet the players. You get to talk to the staff. You get to talk to the, the club manager yeah. and, and the it coaching was, staff. And it was great to see Tim Hull and Alan, and Alan Marchena make their, make their way around the room and, and yeah. actually take time to talk it with everybody. Awesome. And it was more than just, oh, hi and bye. It was just, you know, they were no, having conversations with people. Started yeah. talking. I, I know for a fact we got to talk to Coach Marchena here about college soccer. <laughs> and we had Roy, uh, uh, we have Roy Sander with us talking college soccer. Mm -hmm. And we got to talk about, you know, this whole uh, playing, paying, paying the player for present uh, representation and how is that going to affect the system in the U.S. So, I mean, we're talking about stuff, you know, like we've known each other forever. And yeah. I mean, our interactions with this tab, we know as much as you yeah. guys do. And, and it was like out. that with everybody, though. They made the, they made their way around the room. Yeah, it took to time everybody. to everybody. Shook hands it, with a it, lot of people it. and said hi. And, you know, it was it was an awesome experience. So you can definitely tell that 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 family first culture is already building up so. so now now back to back to my question that i proposed everything with all the changes in the usl mm -hmm. and it going to mls do you like the stance that san antonio have has taken and ssne has taken to just say we're san antonio fc we're not bowing down to anybody we're just going to be our club and whatever comes comes um it, it, it's a uh... I think yeah, it's um, it's a, obviously they're they're taking their own identity, right? They have they're not affiliated with a major league soccer club uh, right now. At they all. were with New York City FC uh, for about two but that seasons. Was more, that was more. And that of was more a management. Yeah, it was, it was more of an off. Was Tab Ramos and um, Tim Holt learning from each other. Yeah, because I know for a fact Tab Ramos. More, yeah, it was more off the pitch. Yeah. it wasn't an actual like we were like shipping players up or them sending players down. I mean, it was a was a uh, indirectly we got Mikey Lopez yeah, at the did. time. And it then, was a contract. And they got and they took Sebastian. And, yeah, Gabriel, but, but um, it's not like we were constantly sending players up and down. Uh, you know, or we were connected like say like those doses to the galaxy so it was kind of a one-year experiment where they kind of fed off each other on the business end and obviously i think both clubs uh benefited from that but um san antonio fc right now yeah they're they're doing their own thing uh they're not planning to affiliate with any major league soccer clubs i don't think they're going to plan to do anything with austin fc once at austin no, FC. No, 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 they no. don't want to be affiliated with them i don't have that feeling um obviously nothing official has been said yet so i don't say that i'm like 
quoting Tim Holter or anything. <laughs> no, no. But, uh, just that's that's just, just the sense that I get from yeah. SSNE is that San Antonio wants to be its own brand. Um, and, and again, like I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's like I'm glad that ma- that we decided not to go Major League Soccer because for one, like the crest would change. And the yeah, crest, absolutely. And to me and to you, the crest means a lot. Yeah, you know, if you I don't know what it. the crest means, I mean, it's military city. Like each stripe stands for a service branch of the military. Yeah, people don't know that. You know, people like, don't know that. You know, obviously you got the little spur in there for SSNE, but like to me, the most important part is the stripes, and I, you know, I don't want to see that ever go away. No, and their sense of patriotism, and not only that, we're one of the, I think, if not the only club that prides itself in its heritage of San Antonio of it's just not football. It's actually San Antonio Football Club with the accented U on it. So yeah, that, yeah. That a, goes away. And I I love bragging about that to everywhere, everywhere we've gone, especially, you know, when we were in Vegas for that Vegas game, you say, hey, well, we're actually a football club. Mm-hmm. You know, we actually are a football club. We're not some, you know, just by FC. We're, yeah, San Antonio FC, but it, our, our crest literally says San Antonio FC. And it's right there, football club, <laughs> right then and there. Right there on the cup. Sorry to grab your cup, but I yeah, just saw it. Man. I was like, oh, yeah. my gosh, there it is right in front of me. But, um, yes, to that event, I-, I love the fact that we've kept those integrity. Miguel, let's, let's, let's talk about how do you become a season ticket member to San Antonio FC. It is super simple. Call the phone number that's listed you on the website. You can call, page. you can text it. We're going to post it probably like right here somewhere. Yeah, we're going to post we'll it to post you. We'll post the 2 number there, but you could also go to the website to sanantoniofc.com. You could always click there on the link for the ticket, uh, STM membership. Uh, you, you know, don't even have to call. There. Literally, we were told today by no, management, text, text, yeah. text us. Yeah, tell them to the text us, text. and we'll we'll go from there. Uh, payment plans. Yeah, they got payment plans, plans for it, yeah. everything. So, hey, I love it. Become part of the family because there are some big things coming down our way. Um, big signings are going to be coming down the way. Re-signings are going to be coming down the way. We're going to find that out as, as as we go. We don't know who it is, but what yeah, as much as we th- love to start throwing names out there and speculating, yeah, it's kind of no. the silly season still pretty early. Um, I know there's a lot of talented players out there. I mean, you have players that were on the Fresno team that are out of a job. Oh right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Ottawa, big, the big two, obviously Lansing Ignite from the USL one. Yeah, they folded they, as well. A lot of those players. So you got players there that maybe San Antonio C could take a look at. I mean, you got other players around from the club. There's one that you mentioned over here was, uh, Gladson, right? Oh, yeah, from yeah. Phoenix. Yes, uh, the, you know, he's a midfielder. midfielder. He's a talented midfielder for that played with, with Phoenix, Phoenix, uh, rising. rising yeah. Um, he's out of contract right now. He's a guy, a guy on international. He, he played on the U20. So yeah. he's got exp- international he's quality, experience. Man. So quality. he's a player that maybe possibly could look at it. You got the college ranks. I know I said I was going to throw names here, and I'm already throwing names out there. <laughs> it's hard. But, uh, it's hard. It's so hard, man, because you want to start talking. But uh, you know, here at the college level, here locally in San Antonio, you got Ali Wright that Ollie had a successful Wright, season. Man, that kid's crazy from I mean, St. Mary's. You got Miguel Velasquez, who was a senior at UIW. You know, yeah. he he kind of uh, held you know held that team together, even though they weren't successful on the field so much in wins. But, but he got he got he but got he got the job done, relevant, and yeah. I think he yeah, and I mean he looks healthy, and he he's a stout player that could probably play in the USL. You know, he he looks like he has the stamina to play in the USL. Yeah. So no, no, without uh, a doubt, and that's just that's just a few there. I mean, but there's tons of players you know alan marchena he's a he's a smart guy he's going to do his scouting and his reporting and like you said plenty of times you've seen him writing little notes ah, yeah, he's, so, a, he's an intelligent canadian you know sure. and and i'm pretty sure these player signings are going to come also all, all i ask for everybody is just to be patient i know we're, we're making rash you know rash comments about you know jack barnby being gone yeah he's gone uh, you know, we lost Frank, you know, Frank the These Tank Lopez. Were, they were going to happen. They were just, yeah. it's a, they was just Viscosi a matter of time. went to Europe. You know, he's playing, I think, at Switzerland you know, it's just now. A matter of time. We got you know, some quality so players. So, yeah, we lost some quality players, but we're going to get some quality players in. So, all yeah. I ask is just be patient for now. You know, trust me, like, I, my initial reaction to wanted, I wanted to scream to the clouds because Jack Barnby was gone because he's, you know, he was one of my favorite players. But well, he's such good. Is, he's good, man. Yeah, but he's such is a life here in USL, man. Everybody's on a one on a one year contract. I think maybe like one percent of the USL might have like that option for year two or be signed on for a clear two to three years. But that's very rare. So you're gonna have player turnover. So unless the the union that started here pushes more multi year contracts where players can have stability, club can have stability, then you could probably start seeing you know more players staying for two three years without having to sign every single year. They could stay on for a two three year contract. You know, and have and 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 I think that'll also put at ease to these players the mindset because they know like, hey, I'm going to be with this club for three years. I can I can work hard. My family can. I know my family can stay here in San Antonio. So there's there's a lot of factors for that. So um, if we can do that, if we can get players on multi year contract, if that's an option, San Antonio FC, Alan Marchena, go ahead and do it. You yeah, know, no, they're quality players. Put them on 
on multi-year multi-year contracts. Let's kind of see what we can do to kind of emulate what Louisville has done in the Eastern Conference, where they're just perennials. They're just always at the top of the table, you know, or Phoenix that that's always at the top of the table in the Western Conference. You know, it's time for San Antonio to do the same thing. Agreed, one hundred percent. And with that. Let's move on into what needs to take place for San Antonio FC to have a successful season. We got to hear uh, Coach Marchena today. Basically, he was building up, building up the team. You know, everybody on their minds that we spoke to from the fans. Everybody just wants to make playoffs. Everybody just wants to get back to those winning ways. Um, two years ago, three years ago, has left a bitter <coughs> taste in their mouth. They all want to get back to the winning ways, the tradition. Nobody wants to be left out on eleventh place again. Nobody wants to be on the outside looking in. A lot of those, those were some of the things that people were telling me today. Now, they did talk about their big, with the big start to, uh, of their signings was re-signing Christian Parrano. I get it. The kid's good. He, he's He's got some talent. He you had know, interest from other leagues, from, got, you had, know, Major yeah, League Soccer. Some, you know, MLS yeah. wanted him. Other teams were offering money. Uh, we know for a fact, just because of the way this kid interacts, with his fans we've seen it and what we know from him is you know he loves this city you know he uh, he, he feels that he's got unfinished business here with that all said it with that yeah. all said with christian parano's side we talked about this the other day about bringing other people in my biggest issue with san antonio fc right now my biggest concern i wouldn't say issue but my biggest concern with san antonio fc right now miguel is our salary cap how much did we spend on this kid how much did we spend on this kid and our salary caps that much? Because we, we both know Spurs Sports Entertainment. Well, but let's be honest. The USL is not going to play pay six figures for a kid or for a person, for no, anybody. The no. USL itself in the league is not going to play no more than what, 60? I think 60 to 70. Like, 70 like max? Probably the high end. There may be players that are getting paid a little bit higher. Uh, we're, we're, and now let me clarify. On the USL contract contract i'm not talking about mls loanies that come down to us yeah, yeah, that's because, a whole different ballgame but on the usl yeah. contract miguel what is the most you're looking at probably somewhere in the range of 60 to seventy thousand. the most so for, that means for USL if player. you really want the majority to, of them are probably within the 30 to forty thousand dollars. so you're telling me right now they're that, making they're making middle you know their middle class income kind of basically so let's, let's assume this let's let's assume this we we paid christian parano this 19 year old kid top 60 tops but then you got guys. We're just throwing theoretical numbers. Yeah, theoretical by the way. numbers. Yeah, we just mm-hmm. throw about theoretical numbers. Let, let's just face it. This the SAFC is not the San Antonio Spurs. They don't have pockets like this, like Greg Popovich and a losing season and a bunch of whiny basketball players. You know, bottomless pockets have. We don't. As yeah. San Antonio FC, that I know my place when it comes down to our club, and we do not have those deep pockets that the Spurs on a losing season have. Let's just be honest. Yeah. We're paying, hypothetically, we're throwing this kid big money. He's your first signing, so you got to throw big money at him. Yeah. What about guys like Channel? What about guys like, you know, other guys? I mean, you can't sign multi, multi-talented multi players that we need from outside the league or even from within our club to that kind of money. So yeah, that, well, that yeah. scares me, man. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the U.S. We're putting our hopes... On a 19-year-old kid. Yeah, it's well, it's the USL. I mean, it's Division Two, and a lot of these clubs don't. I mean, yeah, we're we're kind of criticizing the budget that uh, SSNE is putting into San Antonio FC, but you got to think about it. We're we are probably in the top ten, if not top five, in terms of Correct. funding for these clubs. I mean, there's clubs out there that operate. Oh, on nothing. On nothing. Oh Lord, yeah. I mean, I like these guys. Money. I mean, these guys probably have you know a freaking intern for their medical staff. You know, mm-hmm. like I mean. You know, and they they operate on, on a budget like they're. You I mean you could tell by what the club op, you know operates basically by the type of jersey they have. You know, by their you know like yeah, the, they only the, get like one jersey. Yeah, they, they get one jersey, and then and then they look for that one. You know, you you see that no name uh, yeah. logo that yeah, you never yeah, heard yeah. of, and that's you know you could kind of base on that. You know, off of that that that's what their operating costs are. So I know we're kind of getting into deep into like the nerdy part of USL, but it, it has to be said. It's got to be spoken of. Like, well, be spoken. You have to have that deep understanding. Where, what's our to, budget? What's our budget? And yeah. who are we going to bring in? And I know for a fact, knowing Alan Marchena, knowing Tim Holt, and only organization in the past, I've been hard at work. Because let's look back at the last three years, the last four years, with the under Darren Power and Tim Holt. A lot of the announcements didn't come until like January. 
Yeah, and it's January, just, it, seems like, it, seems, it seems like that. It's been like that every year. Well, it's I mean, year like, one, obviously, because they came well, in January. Well, year so one, they late. only had a coach and a manager, and that was it. Yeah, and, and all the players signed. I mean, I think they were still signing players like a week before the season yeah, started. They, no, so. they signed players a week before the games. I remember yeah. that. Without a back, that initial, that, that first uh, first season, they were signing players a week before the matches. Yeah, before the and season started. Now, yeah. and, then, and then all of a sudden, fast forward, January, February, here within the next two, three weeks, we're going to be starting seeing who's coming back, who's not. Um, but again, how many players are we going to turn away because of budget? I mean, SSNE's got to do something. Give us a little bit more money so that we can have a winning championship unless Spurs Sports Entertainment is fine just picking up whatever they can and not want well, to have no a i think they're gonna season. they're gonna they're gonna keep their core players so like i would expect to see brian gomez back i mean the, the tandem of okay. him and christian pirano played very well i mean it would be it would be a hard loss for them to lose brian he was good uh you know walter estrepo will probably come back oh, rafa fine. we'll see i mean i mean rafa does turn 40 yeah he will be 40 for the majority of the season i think he turns 41 next 41. year. 41 they're out uh, the season, so I mean that's that's already. I mean we need we need as a, and a, as great shape that Rafa is in. I mean Father Time's undefeated, so can oh, he yeah, last? Yeah, yeah. Can he can he last can a brutal 32, 34? I don't think he'll last ninety, but no. every, not match to match. But but we need I mean, some deep, still like, I mean you got like like Mike um, Mahood, you got a con. Well, who'll probably be back? Um, I think our defensive line for the most part will be back. Yarrow, Kai Green, those, all those three, guys. yeah, Green, um, Cardoni. We got to wait and see. He's been around for a while, so mm, I mean, well, we we lost his coaches. So we don't have any other buddy, but you know. Cardone, I mean, so that's that's kind of a given. Well, yeah. no, Cardoni signed for a two year contract, didn't he? Uh, or is he year by year? I think he's year by year. Year by year. Okay, I'm pretty sure he's year by year. But uh, yeah, he's been around. I mean, he's been around the organization for a while. I mean, I would guess he's coming back. But you never know. It might be a time for him. He might say, "Hey, it's a time for a change. I might want to go to another club." That'd be dangerous. Yeah. That'd be so, dangerous. But we'll see. I mean, we can, like, again, like said, it's we're, just, we're bringing it's all speculation. It up This is the silly season. That's why we're it's speculating right now. It's a silly right season, and I love it. That's very, very well put. Expectations, Miguel. What do you expect to see um, here in the coming weeks, um, right before the Christmas uh, holiday breaks? Uh, my guess would probably be mostly re-signings, just the players that were on the roster last year. That'd be nice to see who's coming back. To see who's coming idea. back. Uh, we might get one or two new players. I'd say three signing. or four. I say four I players. Want, I, get I know four we're pretty close. You're, you're saying here the next couple of weeks. So I mean, you got Christmas thrown in there, New Year. So I'm just saying maybe one or two signings that you'll see new players coming in. Um, we might see. I mean, yeah, definitely January. You'll start seeing everything coming coming together uh, because February. I think camp actually starts in the middle of January for them. Yes. And then preseason's early. And preseason start, starts, yeah, starts February. right there in February, yeah. Yeah, because I remember last year, February, we are up on our way to What I would like Dallas. to see, though, in preseason is uh, don't do not do those closed matches like y'all did last year. Uh, what SAFC did. They had like... Oh, yeah, the UIWs. And the UI, the yeah, well, even even with RGV and St. Louis oh, that FC. that terrible. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to go to that St. Louis one. Yeah, I thought close. that would have been interesting. Um, you know, I mean, the fans are going to go out there. I can understand maybe you want to do like a dress rehearsal or something, but, you know, I can understand like the college ones, you could do a closed, but... I mean, I felt like you lose an opportunity with the fans there. Absolutely. Because, it's I mean, all about we got a lot of feedback where they wanted to go to the preseason matches. And I'll tell you this. And you're not going to get 8,000 there, but you no, can always no, open no. up, you know, you can always open up one side of the stadium like they did with a couple of the matches. And yeah, put them all on the, put them all on the 101. Yeah. 101 uh, yeah, they it? get the people out there. You know, they the, want the 111, the 118 section. Yeah, Just they put want, them on that section right there. Yeah, they want to go out there and watch the preseason matches. So, I mean, I felt like that was lost opportunity last one thing, year. And I'm glad you, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that I got from our, um, uh, uh, STM um, Christmas party was I felt that we were back together again. I honestly felt closeness, like yeah. I really did. Like we were on, interacting with everybody, the staff, including um, the, the 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 marketing staff there in the front office. They were all there, and I I enjoyed it, man. I got to talk to everybody. Like I haven't spoken to them in a long time. I kind of missed them. I missed you guys. I really yeah. did. It well, was awesome. The supporters and the fans, yeah, too. not man, just not I just the it. you know not just the front office people, but you know we got to see the people that are out there, you know, uh, that make make it happen. You know, the yeah, fans. Because without the fans, the club is nothing. No, so, nothing. And uh, it, was it was fun. Great. We got to see yeah. some winners and everything. Cr ugly Christmas sweater, Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, a whole photo booth. The whole thing. It was awesome. So with that being said, folks, it, it's going to be a good year for us. I think it's going to be a lot of changes coming down. Lots of changes down in the USL. Um, lots of things happening within the club. Lots of hope, I think, in my opinion. But again, the biggest question that we have to, that I have to pose, and I don't know what your opinion on this is, is hey, SSNE, what are you giving us for money, man? What are we using? How much is our budget to bring in some quality players? 
because we need to make playoffs. For us this year, it's going to be playoffs or bust. And I think that's on Coach Marchano's uh, mind. There's no doubt in my mind that this coach is uh, needs this. I mean, we need to make playoffs. We need to have a successful winning season where we're above 500, not on the 11th place, fighting for 10th to play a wild card. We need to solidify one of the top four, in my opinion, for this season with this signing. What's going to go happen if we're going to get some players? Miguel, we need to be a top four contender. Totally, completely agree. I mean, like I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is a marquee club in a marquee city for the USL and the Western Conference. Absolutely. Let's move on now to Texas high school soccer. Yes, they are in preseason public schools, but the TAPS has already begun their season. They're already almost a month into their season. And on December 20th, a battle of battles will be held here in San Antonio, Texas, over at the Bantham Stadium. That is Central Catholic. Yes, that is their mascot. But Central Catholic, December 20th. Buttons. I mean, the Buttons, the Banthams. <laughs> the Buttons will be playing here in a, a big match on uh, December 20th against Houston at Bel Air Episcopal, a nationally ranked team. Bunch of Division One kids playing for Bel Air, um, and and you know uh, Central Catholic is not too far behind. They they pride themselves in putting kids in the San Antonio FC Academy. Three of them has two of them has signed professional contracts with San Antonio FC, mm-hmm. and they got a team this year, man. They're going for a four peat in the Texas Association of Private and Parochial Schools. Here in Texas, not too far after that, they'll be playing a public school to show them, hey, who's the best of the public and the private ones? And they'll be playing, I think. They're going to be playing Lee early, be playing early Lee. January, I think a, first week of January. A nationally ranked team, and we'll be bringing you that one as well. But for right now, December 20th at seven at 7.30 at the Central Catholic Stadium, it's going to be a epic match. Miguel, I'm excited about this one. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. As soon as that schedule came out and we saw that Central Catholic was going to play Episcopal. Oh, we ate it up. Uh, yeah, and then we got the DM saying that that, that game was, it's, was coming. It's greenlit. Yeah, yeah we're going. So, oh, boy. Yeah, people started getting excited. We got excited. So, I mean, yeah, it's two nationally ranked teams, uh, two teams ranked in, high here in Texas. And uh Last year, Episcopal and Central Catholic met. Episcopal actually beat Central Catholic 1-0. 1-0. Last year, uh, I think they played in early January. Actually, well, earlier this year, I should say. They played in early January of this year. So so it's not even 12 months uh, since the last matchup. So I know Central Catholic is going to be probably looking for a little bit of revenge. And Episcopal is going to be looking to maintain their dominance over Central Catholic over that win last year. Don't forget to tune in for uh, uh, with us at that day, 7.30, December 20th, 20th on SoySaf YouTube. We're going to show our, our link here, and we're going to be pro- definitely going to be promoting that game before the match. Join us. Come out. Support soccer in San Antonio. We have a lot of high school soccer coming down the pipeline. A lot of girls' soccer is underway. Once public schools start their regular season, trust me, we're going to be there giving you everything we got. Yeah, January, February is going to be it's going to be heating Packs up because that's a regular fun. season. And then we roll right into March. It's going to be by district area. And then before you know it, we'll be in state. Let's talk a little bit, just a little bit about other high school teams. San Antonio Reagan doing a really good job. Um, Brownsville, Hannah, a lot of Valley, Valley schools came up to San Antonio for preseason friendlies. Um, Brownsville, Hannah going down to, I believe, was home. I think yeah. no, was it Holmes? I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, one of the San Antonio schools are coming on up. Uh, so the Valley schools are very well represented. If there is an arch rival in uh, Central Texas, it is the Rio Grande Valley, who has been up and coming over the last couple of years. It's a back and forth battle between those schools: Brownsville, Hannah, another state ranked team at San Antonio, Lee Taft, Reagan. All these teams yeah. are yeah, state. Alamo Heights, and Alamo Heights, Heights is in yeah, there Johnson. as well. Goodness, yeah, Johnson's looking really good. Yeah. Johnson, good out of the southeast side over there, is looking yeah. very, very, very good. Yeah. They're going to be a sleeper team for sure. Yeah. And South the, side, you have the Dragons, the Dragons. Uh, which is what Southwest, well, Southwest, Southwest, High School? Southwest High School. Yeah, the Dragons. I remember they 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 made a run uh, last year into the by yeah. districts uh, into the district. So and then on the girls' side, we're I'm expecting a lot of things out of Steel High School girls soccer team. Obviously, Lee is has uh, we got to see them against New Braunfels yeah. this 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 past Sunday. Um, they have three. They have four D one soccer players yeah. on the women's side. So San Antonio, we love for you to join us on the Texas high school soccer game of the week here in San Antonio for this episode number three of twenty twenty. I am Benjamin Dosa. I am Miguel Padilla. 
we love you guys we appreciate you guys following us don't forget to follow us on instagram facebook twitter tiktok youtube subscribe hey we just passed 200 subscribers oh on. that's right Kill so, going, so we want to say thank you for all the subscribers on youtube we just passed 200 i know it sounds like a small number but hey when we started what a year ago we were like at 12 yeah we had nobody so, so we're proud. obviously we're growing and we're we're, very and proud. we're we're just shy of a thousand on twitter so uh yeah, go ahead keep, and tell your friends going. about it keep you know tell them to join uh follow us on twitter we got a lot of great information and i mean keep us keep it posted because we're going to be bringing all the player news on San Antonio FC, news on high school, college, everything. 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 So, so don't forget also, folks, submit your plays of the week that you got on your video camera, on your cell phone. Send it to us on the DM. We're going to give you guys a shout out. We would love to highlight those on all our platforms. From Soy San Antonio Football, I am Benji. This is Miguel. We'll be seeing you guys real soon. Support some soccer here in San Antonio.